Okay, what do we film today? You could talk about the Infinis. That's true, we still haven't gotten around to filming that Infinis review. So, what's up with the wig? How else are they gonna tell us apart? You didn't think maybe I put a different shirt on? This was easier? Catch. Oh, jeez, okay, uh, I guess we're talking about the Infinis today. The blaster that serves two functions in one form. Kind of like two versions of me, one video. Yeah, see what I did? Yeah, okay, it wasn't that. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> the Infinis is a beast of a blaster coming in at around $70 MSRP US. And it's a big boy. It is wide, it is thick, it is chunky. It's, it's kind of ugly for being really, really honest. Now, if we'd gotten rid of this grip right here, this blaster would be a whole lot better looking. It would have much better lines, much better flow to it. It would look pretty cool, I gotta say. But instead, they lopped on this big piece of plastic and called it a grip. And it's fully empty so you can squeeze it and squish it and it feels cheap. Very, very cheap. And that's a major bummer from Hasbro. As far as performance goes, we'll put some numbers up and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But the big thing to talk about for the Infinis that is the reason most people are interested in it is the fact that it has a reloading mechanism. So you can drop your darts into this guide right here and it will seat them in your magazine until it is full. And that is a pretty cool gimmick, if we're being 100% honest. Uh, there's been plenty of people talking about just wanting to buy a bunch of Infinis blasters cut off the blaster parts and just use the feeding mechanisms to reload their magazines in between or before games. But who doesn't like the idea of just being able to grab a handful of darts and drop them in and not have to worry about pulling the follower down, putting one in, reorienting the darts in your hand, pulling the follower down, putting one in. It becomes a little time consuming and tedious. So if this functions, I see a decent reason for giving it a, a look. Now, let's put some batteries in here and actually get a look at how this performs and test things out. Let's start with performance. This is an elite blaster and it gets right around elite FPS. I'll go ahead and pop up a screen with the uh, chronograph data from the one 30 dart drum emptying and it's uh there's not much to talk about in terms of performance in the fps numbers there were a couple uh errors or very odd low readings that kind of brought the average down but for the most part it was hitting in that uh range you would expect to see for an elite blaster in its stock form now something i did notice was with my drum i actually had a hard time feeding the full auto feature of the blaster, which was strange considering I'd run this through at 15 darts per second with one of the Fox fires. And so I don't know why it was giving me issues trying to go full auto with this. Whereas I dropped in like a, a worker mag or a standard 18 and there were no issues with the full auto on this. So I don't know what exactly was up with that, but it was something that I did encounter. Now the 30 dart drum is nice because it is, uh, less bulky than the 35 and only losing five darts it does you know not sit off to either side like the old 35 does but rather right down the middle which is nice it, it, you can actually kind of rest your hand on it which is something i i don't mind doing as well here uh as you've probably heard while i've been pulling this this drum out and putting it back in it's not smooth it's not a smooth motion, it doesn't just slide right in, it catches and you have to kind of slam it in. So it gets stuck there and then you have to push it. Uh, it's like there's an extra switch in here that tries to realize when there's something in and when uh, the kind of dart feeding mechanism needs to be engaged, which is what you hear after the magazine is inserted. Now this does work with any magazine type you can pop it in and it will reload it through the reload mechanism back here. However, it won't tell you when it's full until it fails to load something in. So actually down here, 
I believe there are two switches rather than one for the, the recognition that there's a magazine in. And the second one, I believe, is for the magazine, the 30 dart drum that comes with the blaster specifically to let it know that it's in there and it'll count to 30, I believe, or something. It'll let it know that it's full and it'll stop taking things in when it's full. It doesn't do that for other magazines only this drum. Otherwise, I just have to keep loading things in and eventually it will tell me it's full because it's not able to actually push the follower down any further and it's already squished more darts into the magazine than it's supposed to have, which is a bit of a downside. So it's not like you can just mindlessly uh, dump darts into this and have it fill magazines and let you know when it's full you have to actually count the darts you're loading in when doing so, which it's not the end of the world, but it's certainly a feature I would have liked to have for all magazines, but that's not really realistic, unfortunately, unless Hasbro released a whole bunch of magazines in different sizes, specifically for the Infinis and only the Infinis, which... That doesn't seem, doesn't seem like a, a, a smart business decision for Hasbro. Uh, now, the actual loading feature itself, it works for the most part. I was able to jam it relatively easily. Uh, you can't just mash darts in as quickly as you want. You do have to kind of wait for the cycle to complete. Um, I did also manage to get darts. So there's a button right here, actually, a kind of thing that depresses as you put your dart in and as that happens the motor starts spinning waiting for a dart trying to catch it to pull it in to then be pushed down into the magazine uh, so if you hit that and you push the dart in but you don't let go of the dart completely it can actually get stuck right there and then you have to kind of push it in and get that dart past this button and then you have to put another dart in to to depress that, but hold that dart and don't let that dart get pulled in potentially, because then you're going to have another jam dart. And it's, it can be a little bit of a bummer when it happens because it slows things down considerably. That said, it does function. It does what you would expect it to do. I rather like that. It's a cool feature. It's a cool gimmick, a cool idea. And I may be bringing this to games just to load magazines, just to see if it really is easier or saves time or is worth lugging around an extra big bulky blaster just for it. Um, so you may get an update video at some point here where I talk about this kind of after more use, after more intense use of it. But as for other parts of it, I... The, sh the stock is short, which is an issue with most Hasbro blasters. If you are a larger teen or an adult, these are generally made for children. So the stocks are shorter, which is something we've kind of grown to accept. The grip is actually pretty comfortable. I don't have many complaints about it. It's, it's actually uh, fits my hand relatively well. I have fairly large hands, so that's definitely a plus. The mag release position isn't bad it still allows for your main hand release of the of the mag or drum rev trigger is kind of nice and it kind of looks like they used a similar uh look for both the rev trigger and the mag release it's kind of like a nice mirrored effect i kind of like that it does have the tiger striping rather than the digital camo kind of raised sections that the uh newer blasters had all been getting kind of switching to this tiger stripe stuff it's like i said in the intro if they just remove this grip, which is empty, 99% empty, there's just one switch right here that uh, when I looked at the internals that Buff Daddy pulled up that prevents this from, from I guess, being gone. But like, why couldn't they just make it much smaller, slightly more angled just to accommodate that little piece right there? It would have been so much nicer looking, uh, so much more balanced feeling now it just it just makes it even chunkier than it already is, which is a major bummer. Now, as for the modding potential of this blaster, people are still working on it. I have yet to see a fully, completely overhauled uh, Infinis. It is a pusher system like the Rapid Strike, so that is definitely a plus. But there's a lot going on inside, so trying to mod this to get 
everything right and get the uh, feeding and loading mechanism working properly. There are people working on it. I know there's actually been some, thing, some things posted on Reddit for people that have actually tested and found what all of the uh, spots on the board inside are for. So I expect relatively soon we'll see people posting modified versions of the Infinis and we'll see how they do. I imagine it's gonna be pretty similar to Rapid Strikes in terms of performance because it is very similar, especially in terms of barrel length and everything as well there. So we should be able to see some, some pretty solid performance out of this once people get this all sorted to still keep the reloading mechanism in place. Uh, I don't know what kind of cage it takes. I think people have been trying to figure that out, but I'm sure we'll see some cages for it in the aftermarket in the relatively near future. Getting to my final thoughts on this, for $70, I don't think I can recommend it just yet. That price has to come down, especially as we get closer to the holiday season. $50 for this seems like a good price. That is a price I would willingly pay for this uh, because it's, it's fun. Like just the reloading mechanic in its own is fun. It's not $70 fun, uh, especially because it's gonna be more of a pain to mod. For those of us that wanna take it to actual games and things like that with higher FPS caps, it's, it's gonna require some serious time and investment to get to that point. So already jumping in at a higher price point than something like a Rapid Strike or a Strife or a Modulus, any of those blasters, is a bit of a deterrent. But with that said, I... I think there's a lot of good potential here and a lot of fun to be had. If you just want it for a stock game for around the office uh, for your kids, they will they will enjoy this, I think. Uh, it's just one of those fun gimmicky blasters that has potential for great performance as well for the modding community, but just succeeds in what it aimed to do for the most part. Like I said, there are a couple issues with the loading and the, the mechanism in there, but they're not major ones. They're not ones that break the blaster. Uh, they're just minor inconveniences. So depending on what your goal is, is where we'll, where we'll end this. If you want something just fun and goofy and, and for the office, for the kids, for plinking around and having something goofy, this is, this is a fun blaster. I don't think it's worth the $70 though. 50, even $60 would be a little bit better price than the 70 MSRP of this. Let me know what you think of this down in the comments below. A special thank you to Trail Miner, who is one of the channel's patrons for sending this our way so we could do this review. Big thank you to you and thank you to everyone that supports this channel. Whether you like, uh, subscribe, share, support on Patreon, all those things, they all are amazing and wonderful. So thank you every single person watching this video. Uh, and with that said, if you're new to this channel and you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.